Okay, hi guys, welcome to Biology Online with Annie from Feeder. Hey guys, here we go again. Um, back into lockdown. Woohoo! Anyways, I hope you guys are all safe and that um, there's no effect on everybody out there. Anyways, um, I thought I would just go over the structure again um, of the internal so to make sure that everybody knows exactly what to do. Now, I strongly suggest that you take very 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 good notes on this so in other words pause the video rewind the video pause the video write it all down make sure that you get everything and if you follow all these instructions you do will do really really well okay so I'm kind of spoon feeding you guys here um, so yeah please just follow the instructions you'll do great all right so without further ado Let's get on with it. Okay, so again, adaptations, um, animal adaptations. So the first thing we're going to write is our general introduction. Now the general introduction we will write on gaseous exchange and specifically you will say what is gas exchange, why do all living things need to do gas exchange and you'll talk about respiration and how respiration produces CO2 and how to get rid of the CO2 and then you need oxygen because oxygen is one of the reactants of respiration. Then what are the four things needed for gas exchange and the diffusion um, and for diffusion to occur successfully. Remember that is a moist surface, it is a short distance, it is the maintaining of a favorable concentration gradient and um, yeah, short distance, favorable concentration gradient, moist surface, huh, now I can't remember what the last one is, large <laughs> surface area, okay, so large surface area, there we go, so first one after you've written your introduction, you will then write about animal one, in this case I decided the fish will be animal one, Okay, you then write a general introduction about the fish and in that general introduction you can you are going to choose a specific one in this case you can see there's a picture of a snapper up there and you say what is the animal you are discuss discussing you say well it's the Australasian snapper and the scientific name is this 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 um, describe its niche and its habitat and you can say well the snapper is a opportunistic predator and it loves to eat mussels and so it is a bottom feeder, um, it loves to eat mussels and other crustaceans, um, it's got really strong teeth to help it to do that, um, consequently it's always close to reefs and stuff, so there's rocks in the area, um, and but it obviously lives in water because it is a fish. Okay, now snapper are hunted by not only humans, but also by larger predatory um, fish and potentially mammals like dolphins, like um, some shark species, like, I don't know, barracuda, you name it. Um, I imagine if you're a baby snapper you might be eaten by a kawai and so forth. But the, so the snapper keeps the crustacean or the uh, mollusk organisms in check and then they are eaten by predators above them. You need to go and research that. So what are the advantages or the challenges in this habitat for its gas exchange system? The gas exchange system of the snapper is obviously designed to cope with the water environment. Unfortunately the water environment is very low in oxygen concentration. Okay, and that's something that you need to mention. And how will it overcome that? That could be one of the adaptations that you talk about. Furthermore, um, some advantages is that the snapper doesn't have to worry about um, producing mucus because it's always in a wet environment. Also it's cold-blooded so it doesn't have to worry about keeping itself warm and unnecessarily using respiration and so forth. So what is the role that this fish play in the niche? Again I told you the role that a snap plays already when we're talking about predation, how it keeps things in control, what will happen if there's not enough snapper in the food chain and so forth. Um, what's its food, prey, and then what is its main predator. Okay, so that's your introduction to the fish. Then we go on to the first adaptation, adaptation one, and you will choose a specific adaptation. How does 
the adaptation help to do gas exchange and or diffusion. So in other words, this adaptation is going to link to either your um, large surface area or your, I wouldn't use moisture in a fish, but um, large surface area um, or maintaining the large surface area, maintaining a favorable concentration gradient or then a short distance between the water and the blood. Okay, so why does it have this adaptation? It needs this adaptation to blah 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 blah. So for instance if you talk about the operculum, we said that that's a bony flap that protects the delicate gills underneath it. Why does it have this? Well it lives close to to rocky reefs and other re um, rock outcroppings. Um, it's also when it spawns in the in the shallow waters. Um, waves can throw it against it so it does definitely need protection from its environment and hence why it has very strong operculi. How does the anapto... okay and we just said that without this the large surface area of the gill will be in trouble um, and consequently it won't be able to get enough um, oxygen out of the water and if it doesn't get enough oxygen out of the water it cannot catch smaller fish or it cannot catch um, or have enough energy to open um, shellfish and so forth or swim away from its predator and you need to be specific about what you're writing here. Then you do exactly for adaptation 2 again specific adaptation how does the adaptation help to do the gas exchange diffusion how does it why does it have the adaptation and how does the adaptation help the animal to be successful in its niche and exactly the same for the third one okay so that's our pattern that we're going to follow for every one of our animals we're then going to go and do the mammal um, and we can see that first like the fish we first do an introduction to the mammal and we do the same thing what is the mammal you're discussing what is its scientific name describe its niche and its habitat what are the advantages or challenges in this habitat for gas exchange what role does this fish this fish have the mammal play in the niche sorry copy and paste edit there what is the food and prey and how does it get it and what is its main predator now when you write all of these things you need to remember how the gas exchange system works into this so we have a very good gas exchange system for as mammals um, for the air environment but it brings challenges such as drying out or desiccation um, but be and the nice thing is we can breathe faster with our tidal ventilation and slower as needed that's why when we do strenuous exercise or we're chasing prey or we're running away from a predator we can use a very deep breath and deep breathing to ensure that we get away from them okay that, that's the type of stuff I want to see in you okay and then adaptation one you need to talk about a specific adaptation how does adaptation help to do gas exchange and or diffusion what does it have why does it have and how okay for every single one of them three adaptations again Okay, and then we go to animal 3 which in this case is going to be the insect and over here we've got a nice wetter um, so exactly the same as previous what are we discussing discussing what is its scientific name the niche again I said what is the role of this fish <laughs> sorry um, play in its niche and what is the food or prey how does it get it what is the main predator so you can say when a kiwi bird is chasing a wetter it needs a lot of um, oxygen hence why the wetter has air sacs and the air sacs will help it as in scurrying through the forest floor um, even if it needs to close its spiracles to keep dust and stuff out uh, there will still be an ample supply of air inside the wetter's um, air sacs and so forth and so forth okay so we talk about how they are that was an adaptation that I described there but you know what I'm getting at okay so again three adaptations exactly the same then we get to the comparison so you have to compare and contrast okay so if you look at this screen you can see that we have that is a fish filament and you can clearly see the lamella on there okay those things around the sides of the lamella that gives us a great surface area, doesn't it? What gives the mammal a great surface area? Look at that. That's the alveoli. Okay, remember? These things are tiny. You can't see them 
with the naked eye you have to look at it under a microscope but because there's so many of them and just remember how big that lung became as we inflated it um, so that is how we increase the surface area and for instance an insect look at all this is a really good dissection you can see that's where the spherical opening is and then it comes in with the main trachea and you can see how they go all over the insect to almost every single little um, piece of tissue that is contained within the insect. Okay, can you see if you think about those distal tips very close to to the I wonder if I can zoom in uh, close if you think about the distal tips um, close to the tissue they are where the moisture is and that's how it creates this huge surface area. Okay. So compare how the three animals achieve the same requirement for gas exchange and diffusion. So in this case, these pictures I show you, that is for surface area. Then you have to have one for, I don't know, maintaining a favorable concentration gradient. You can have one for um, moisture control. You can have one for, I don't know, protection. You can have one for, um, oh, I don't know. There's so many that we can talk about. Um, but yeah, let's go further with this. So number one is the fish okay so now listen carefully this is the first thing you need to do so we're going to do one f compare and contrast for every one of these okay so how does the fish achieve a specific requirement for gases exchange remember we're looking at large surface area moisture short distance and um, maintaining a favorable concentration gradient okay then you say how do the fish how do fish actually achieve this requirement for gaseous exchange? What are the limitations and are advantages for the fish? So limitations. Imagine the warmer the water, remember that? The warmer the water, the less oxygen in it. Okay, that's some of the limitations. So they can't get as much oxygen out there because there isn't as much. So they need to be extremely efficient. Some fish with that have to do ram ventilation. If they have to do ram ventilation, that is a limitation. But an advantage is that they don't have to spend any energy in keeping their gills moist and so forth. Okay? So how does the mammal achieve the same required for gas exchange and what are the advantages and limitations for it? So in other words, how does the mammal do the same thing in comparison to the fish? And then how does the insect do the same thing in comparison to the fish? then we go to the mammal and we say okay the mammal this is its specific adaptation um, and it gives it these advantages or disadvantages and yeah so you talk about that but it's a specific requirement for gas exchange and then how does the insect do the same thing and how does the fish do the same thing are the fish better at it are the insects better at it and so on and then lastly for the insect the same thing how do insects achieve a specific requirement for gas exchange so you can't repeat yourself all the time you need to have three separate ones okay what are the limitations and advantages for the insect how does the mammal achieve this and so on okay so if you don't do the comparison the maximum that you can get is a merit okay but if you do your introduction animal one two and three you discuss all the adaptations and you discuss how it helps them to survive in their environment then you are able to get a merit okay guys so please I know we're in lockdown but we have to keep working at this and you still have to give in your draft on Wednesday alrighty have a fantastic day look after yourselves we will chat again soon thanks bye